Hello everyone and peace of Christ to all of you. Please invite your friends and let us have some good time together. Now we know that Islam is a very, you know, amazing religion and uh, the Quran is the most amazing book. Actually, it's very amazing. I mean, I cannot even stop thinking about it. Uh, you know, like when I was a kid and uh, I think I'm still I am, you know, uh, compared to the Quran. I mean, the Quran doesn't, doesn't matter how old you grow. Still, you are a kid in the front of it. And today, I'm going to show you a kid like me. Actually, he speaks like my voice sometimes, you know. <clears throat> His name is Zachary Naik. And he is going to introduce to you the Quran, you know. And always, Zachary Naik is the best to pronounce the word Quran and to introduce the Quran. Especially when he say, Brother and sister, today we are going to show you a different miracle of the Quran. With the intent that covered in the year 2020. The second you hear this, I mean, you will be feel like you've been, uh, I don't know, like electric shot or something. It's beyond explanation. So, uh, Zakir Naik, who is a Muslim, claim he claimed to be a Muslim scholar. Uh, he copy paste the rest of Muslims they say, and the first one who come with those uh, things is a guy already. He is in jail in Turkey uh, for a child molestation. The Big Bang. <clears throat> you see, we'll try to make a series of uh, of videos uh, about the same videos. This is like a forty-eight minute video, and uh, Zakir Naik speak about things in the Quran, and he mentioned here the Big Bang. You know, the Big Bang is something that exists in the Quran. I mean, it's big and full of bang. To be honest with you. But the bang bang I know in the Quran is different from the bang of the Big Bang. So what the Quran says about the Big Bang? <clears throat> Remember, we have uh, uh, we gave the video a credit in our info. So if you like to watch the Big Bang, you know, this is in the minute 10 uh, from the video of Zakir Naik. The rest, the, the, the beginning of the 10 minutes is just introducing Zakir Naik as if he just came from the sky. It's like he's coming from a spaceship. A guy, he go and he say, today I'm going to introduce to you a brother, his name is Zachary Naik. No, the guy is speaking like Zachary Naik too, but anyway. Uh, so the Big Bang, the Big Bang is in the Quran. Is that true? And they said that initially our universe, it was a primary nebula. Then there was a Big Bang. There was a secondary separation, which gave rise to galaxies, the stars, mm -hmm. the planets, <laughs> exactly. the sun, uh -huh. the moon, uh -huh. and the earth on which we live. Okay. This they call as the Big Bang. Mm -hmm. The glorious Quran mentions this in a nutshell. 1400 years ago, 1400 in Surah years ago. Ambiya, mm -hmm. chapter number 21, verse number 30, the ayah I started my talk with. Okay, that's, that's it. I mean, that's it. I'm going to jump from the top of the mountain now. Remember, he just said, that the stars, the moon, the, the moon, the earth, all happen after the Big Bang. I mean, you Muslim, do you read your book? Do you read, this book is making fun of the Quran. This guy is making fun of the Quran. I am really surprised that not even a single Muslim got so upset from Zakir Naik making fun of Muhammad. Because the second you say that this verse is about the Big Bang, that's mean the rest of the Quran is a lie. If we go and read the Quran, <clears throat> hmm? the Quran have many verses speaking about how Allah created the earth and the heaven. Many verses. So if we type here the word khalaqa, khalaqa which means he created. The first thing we will see is a chapter 2 verse number 29 it says hmm. you see the big bang is gone big bang bye bye big bang it is he who has created for you all things that on earth and then he went to the heaven and he made them seven skies the translation here is a full of lies they say moreover in arabic it says thumma thumma first the word thumma means happen after and there is a long period of time. If you change the translation, 
This is Yosef Ali. Let us say Hilali and Khan. All is the same garbage translation, you know. Okay, then, read carefully with me. It is he. It is he you are looking for. Yeah, this is a different song, sorry. Uh, he is, he it is, who created for you that all in earth, and then he went, he rose over to the sky and toward the heaven, and he made them seven heavens. This is what the Big Bang is saying. This verse saying that everything in the earth created first, and then Allah, he went after that to the heaven, and he made them seven heavens. So, where is the Big Bang? We did not even start yet. So, obviously, the Muslims, when they speak about something, they are not trustworthy when they speak about the religion. Actually, ask yourself, which one is more valid for you as a Muhammadan? The statement of Prophet Muhammad, Allah pray on him, not for him, or Zakir Naik, peace be upon him. For sure you will say Zakir Naik, because Zakir Naik, he make the Quran fit with science. Muhammad don't. Muhammad, he said in this hadith, as an example, Allah that exalted the glorious, created the clay on Saturday, and he created the mountains in Sunday. And he created the trees on Monday. And he created things entirely in labor on Tuesday. And he created light in Wednesday. And the, by the way, uh, what his name? Uh, did that. He was debating a Christian. He says, in your Bible, in your Bible, it says that God, he created the sun in Wednesday. So the earth was without sun for four days. How that can it be accepted? In my Bible, it says that God, he created light first, before the sun. He said, let be light, and light was. So we have light, you idiot. But in your book, there was no light until Wednesday. So the Muslims, they make fun of the Bible. They do not know that Muhammad, he is a copy-paste corrupt man. He tried to copy from the Old Testament, claiming that this is his own God teaching. But look what he did here. He said it clearly that the first thing to be created, it was the dust. The clay in Sunday, Saturday. And then the mountains in Sunday. And then the trees in Monday. And then he created all things entirely in labor in Tuesday, like, you know, grass, uh, uh, animals, blah, 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 blah. And then he created uh, uh, the, uh, the light in Wednesday. And then he caused the animals to spread. And the last thing he created was Adam at a Friday afternoon. Where is the Big Bang? Where is the Big Bang? Right away we discover that somebody is lying. And there is no way that Muhammad is the one fabricating Big Bang now. It is Zakir Naik and Muslim like him who try to make Islam a scientific religion. And if you are a fool, you believe them and you listen to them. But who is going to believe in them and listen to them after this? When they ask Zakir Naik about the Bible says, that the earth is created in six days. He said the Quran says six days, but in the Quran it means period. It means what? Period. But, but do you see your prophet saying Saturday, Sunday, Monday? <laughs> they do anything they can in order to manipulate the book and to change the meaning and to fabricate a new religion just to make it fit with science. Let me tell you something. A true believer, he will not be ashamed of his belief. Doesn't matter if it's agree with the Quran, with, with the science or not. As an example, science does not agree that a woman she can give a child, give birth to a child, and she is a virgin. That is not what science says. Am I going to change my book? This is my belief. A true believer, he will not change his belief to fit with what is called science. But those Muslims are not a true believers. They are doing business. And the business today is to make you believe in something which is not true. And the proof in front of you. And then if you go and read the interpretation for the verse he quote for us, 
It doesn't say at all that the Muslims for the last 1400 years, they understand the verse differently, which is scientifically a mistake. Look what it says. That the heaven and the earth, and this is Tafsir al-Jalalain. Don't the disbelievers see that the heaven and the earth were close together and we parted them? And we made seven heavens and seven earths? This is a totally stupid statement. So from a stupid book to a scientific book by the help of the liars. So what the Quran teach in that verse, though, which Zachary Nayak is quoting, that the earth and the heaven, they used to be closed together and Allah separate them. So what the Muslims believe, the Quran teach, that the earth and the heaven, they were in touch, and then Allah, he did separate them. But is, this tr is that true? In case you do not know, we are swimming inside the heaven, which is the, the space. We are not separated, really. You might say the atmosphere, still that does not make us separated. We are inside the space. Actually, according to Islam, the cloud is the space. The cloud is the heaven. It's not just, you know, I mean the earth. Just the second you fly, you are in heaven. So they do everything they can, everything in their power, in order to make a person, especially if you are naive, you do not know much, to make you believe that the Quran is a book of science. And not only the Quran says stupid things like here, the verse he is quoting for us, that Allah, he separated the earth from the heaven, which is a stupid to say in different verse in the Quran, it says, we lift up the sky. We lift up the sky, we lift it where? Where was the sky and where you lift it up? <laughs> Look what the Quran says. Chapter 21, verse number 32, and chapter 52, verse number 5. Let us go to the first one. And we have made this, the sky a canopy or a roof, well guarded. The Muslim here, they say, oh, this is about the atmosphere. Actually, Zachary Nayak, he said that too. But just to show you how they lie in those things. The sama, the word sama, as we said, it is anything above, from the ground, in the air, and up. And the Quran make it clear that Allah, he created the lamps in the lowest heaven. The lowest sky. <clears throat> And about the protected sky, the Quran claim that Allah He created in the lowest heaven in that sky stars, and He made those stars missiles to shoot the devil in his bum if he tried to get close to Allah's sky, which means the seventh sky. So look what happened. They lie about this one too, and they say this is about the atmosphere. But based on this chapter, this is chapter 21, verse number 32. But if you go to chapter 67, verse number 5, it make it so clear that Allah, he put in that specific heaven, the lowest one, lamps, which mean the stars. And those lamps are created not only for decoration, but to shoot as missiles to shoot the evil one if they try to get out. And I wonder why Allah is not shooting the Russian, the Chinese. I mean, now everybody is going to the sky. And Allah is not shooting anyone. So when the Quran says we made it a protected roof, he's speaking about he protect the sky from the devil. But what the devil want to do? An additional science in the Quran. According to the Quran, the devil, he tried to spy at Allah. And when he tried, Allah shoot him. So look what is fiction and stupid the Muslim, they make it about atmosphere. They make it about seven, uh, uh, you know, uh, layers of the of the sky. They make it about the Big Bang. But as you see, all of this is a fiction and stupid story. But when they try to gain hearing, 
huh? Allah he shoot a flame at them and we guarded them what the sky we guarded the sky from every devil Islam is a religion of conspiracy not only the CIA want to spy at Allah the devil want to spy at Allah too and this is make me feel sorry for Allah I mean the Muslim they say Allah if you want something he say be is going to be can't Allah say is devil cannot you go to heaven he can right actually he did the Quran says in different verse that Allah he ordered shaitan to get out of he from heaven okay and this is in chapter 2 verse number 2, uh, two uh, chapter 2 verse 36 chapter 2 verse number 38 uh, you know uh, chapter 7 verse number 13 chapter 7 verse 24 <laughs> I mean, a chapter uh, 20, verse 123. All of this, it says already, Allah, he said to Shaitan, be, get out. Get down, actually, not get out, because Muslims believe that heaven was in sky, not like in the Bible. So Allah, he told the Shaitan and Adam and Eve, get down, get down. All right? So if Allah ordered Shaitan already to get down and get out of heaven, how Shaitan, he can go to heaven again and spy? As you see, every single statement in this book is a joke. And the best joke is, is to become you yourself, to become the joke. Because the second you believe in their garbage, which is, you know, I did not even give you like a, a deep study yet. I'm, I'm just going around, showing you from verses here and there. And as you see, the Quran is a stupid book. It's a book of fiction. Shaitan want to spy at God. Shaitan want to hear the news. And Allah, he guarded the sky. But the Muslims, they make God in the sky about the atmosphere. But the Quran say, no, this is not about atmosphere, you idiot. It's about the devil. He tried to spy at me. He want to hear my conversation. He's a hacker. And how Allah and what Allah do to stop the hacking of Shaitan? He shoot him in his ass. May Allah ask you. So from shooting ass, God, to atmosphere, Big Bang, you know, from a religion belief, Shaitan, he sleep in your nose, to uh, galaxies and, you know, the, uh, the empty space, like what? Oh. So do you see how they try always to make you look like an idiot? It's a clear sign of a fraud, of corruption in this religion. If those are the scholars, they are lying about their religion. What about the followers then? And why in the world anyone who believe in God, he want to lie to make me believe in his God? Because Islam is a satanic, demonic, evil cult. Otherwise, nobody promotes his religion by lying unless he is following the father of all lies. And what Jesus says about who is the father of all lies? He is the devil. So, as you see, all what they are saying is absolutely a lie. Actually, if we go in different verse in the Quran, we did not check all of them. We are just showing you little because I'm trying to make supposedly uh, the video not too much long. But sometime what you can do. If you go here as an example, you will see uh, in Zach and Eck, in the same video, he says how we can make science fit with those people who believe that the earth is a flat. Actually, the Quran says the earth is a flat. So if you read the Quran carefully, you will see it says it clearly that the earth is a flat. And if you read carefully with me here, you will see how stupid the one who wrote the Quran has an example in front of you. Uh, Zach and Naik, he just mentioned the Big Bang, but look what it says. Which one Allah is which one is more difficult to create? The heaven above, which Allah has constructed, and then he left it up. <laughs> and then he made the day and the night. And after that he made the earth flat. 
<laughs> and the funny here they say moreover I like this moreover when in Arabic it says ba'da and after that that's why you cannot trust Islamic translation if you change the translator from Yusuf Ali to other translation you will see how the word moreover became and after that and there's a huge difference between moreover and after that and after that he spread the earth and after that he brought the water and after that he put the mountains but in the other chapter it's the opposite it was Allah he made the clay the dust first and then he put the mountains and then he did the, the trees and then he created the animals and then he and then after that he created the light so which one of them is saying the truth none of them if you go to chapter 41 and you read from verse number nine it says it clearly in this verse that Allah finished the earth first he created the earth in two days where is the big man two days the earth in two days and then he placed in uh, in the in the uh, earth mountains according to the Quran the mountains are something he placed in the top of it which is funny and then he put all the measure of the earth in four days and then after that he went to the sky <laughs> and after that he made seven heaven and after that he made lamps what is this where is the big bang and not to forget to mention that this is totally the opposite of a chapter 79 so my friends when somebody come to you with something called science when it's come to Islam Islam is the most stupid cult ever religion who believes shaitan play with your anus you can go right now and search for the video where the sheikh explain how the prophet said that if you go inside the bathroom and you don't say certain prayer with the left foot shaitan will play with your anus and he will go inside you and he will block your butt from doing poo poo Islam is religion believe shaitan he sleep in your nose he piss in your ears he jump inside your mouth and he laugh at you Islam is religion believe that the black dog is the devil Islam believe that shaitan he around himself around your penis if you have sex with your wife without praying Islam is a superstition religion as you see so how this religion suddenly became religion of science it's a miraculous way and you know we lie as much we want and then because we are Muslims and we follow the prophet of lies so we support the lies and then if you are a fool who do not know what they are talking about you believe what they are saying and you accept what they are saying and you convert to Islam but how many people will leave Islam after they notice that this is a lie anybody in the chat I don't see the admin doing any good job I see people saying the word piss upon you I see the people saying, etc. Admin, you should block anyone he says such a statement. Otherwise, we will stop the chat. Anyone we use a bad language, we will block you. We are here for education, not to fight with people. If you are here to call names, then leave. So admins, if they are not going to do their job, I will take all the admin down and I will do it. So as you see here, either we believe in what their Quran is saying as it is, or we believe in their lies and what they say. They have interpretation for the Quran for centuries. And suddenly the Muslim they want to overwrite the interpretation well even the Quran here is so clear I mean how you can overwrite this the last thing Allah created is the stars is that what the Big Bang saying and if you read the same verse he quote for us about the earth and the heaven they used to be together and we split them is that the Big Bang you idiot it says here that they used to be together and it says here let me show you how, how a human being sometimes is very silly guys do you see the word don't the unbeliever see guys does it say don't the unbeliever see does it say don't the unbeliever see it is something we can see is the big bang something we can see are we listening 
I want people to learn how to read. Not, I, I'm sure many of you are way better than me in English, right? But for me, I don't read the Quran in English anyway. Arabic is my first language. But don't you see what it says? Look, look, it says, don't the unbeliever see. So if the Big Bang is something we can see. So he's talking obviously about something we see every day. What is that? Oh, the earth and the sky, they used to be close together and we separated them. The, the sky is high, don't you see it? This is, this is not the Big Bang. And when you say that they used to be together, that means the Big Bang happened after they are exist. This is what it says. We separated them. I mean, how stupid we are, don't we see? Why a human being is so shallow, so, so dumb, so stupid? It's in the front of you. The answer of their lies is in the front of you. The heaven and the earth, they used to be together. And then we separated them. So there was heaven, there was earth, and we see it. So the Quran is against their lies. Tons of verses are against their lies. Their prophet himself is against their lies. And yet nobody will make a video to expose lies of Zakir Naik from the Muslims. Why? Because you can lie in Islam as long as you are supporting Islam. The second you say the truth, like Yasser Qadi, who said there's holes in the narrative, suddenly Yasser Qadi became the idiot of the village. Yasser Qadi was a sheikh for them. Oh, sheikh. Today, sheikh, we introduced to you, sheikh, actually. Zakir, this is what Mimi uh, Hajubi, he said. Uh, uh, Dr. Uh, Yasser Qadi, he did not need my introduction. He's very well known. He's like a star. He's like, you know, yeah, he's Michael Jackson. The guy, after five minutes, became the enemy of Allah. Just because the, he said there's holes in the narrative. And as we see, not only there's holes in the narrative, there is a hole in dignity of Islam. The dignity of those who preach Islam. There's a hole everywhere. I mean, the hole is getting bigger and bigger. While their prophet, he says, Allah created the clay in Saturday, they say Big Bang. Their prophet, he says, Allah created the mountains in Sunday, they say Big Bang. Their prophet, he say, he created the tree in Monday, they say Big Bang. How big is your bang, Muslims? That is a question you need to answer. Thank you for listening. Uh, and by the way, a Muslim, he was saying, Christian Prince, you don't have too many views. My friend, it's okay, no, no problem. Uh, you know, I have to agree with you. Christian, don't support me. It's okay, it's okay. But my friend, for me, it's enough. I made tens of thousands of Muslims leave Islam. And my videos is all over. And if you want to watch actually my videos, you don't see them in my channel. Look, my channel empty. You want to see them? Go see them in the other channel, and then you will see the view. For me, I'm honored to see the numbers who will join me in heaven from those who they used to be Muslims, and they believe in the Messiah. I cannot even count their names. That is a priceless. And let us see how many people after they see this video, short video, not long, how many people they can say Christian Prince is lying. Everything I show you, it's in the screen. Everything I spoke to you, it's from your prophet mouth. Everything I explained to you is from your scholars. So what you will say? Christian Prince is lying. The Prophet is lying. Tafsir al Jalalain is lying. The Quran is lying. You can all you can say whatever you want, but people they have eyes and they can see. The Muslim they want me to show my face because they don't want you to see the evidence. The reference is harming. His face is better. Trust me, my face is not better. You will get scared. So my friend, if you are a Muslim and you are listening, don't fool yourself. I'm going to stop this video, but I'm going to come back. How many of you want me to come back after maybe 15 minutes or 20 minutes? Give me one. Let us see. We will make a vote. If the majority says come back, we come back. If the majority says don't, we don't. And then we will answer comments. How many of you want me to come back after 20 minutes?
All right, all right. The majority is saying come back. And as you know, we Arab, we don't believe in democracy, so I'm not going to come back. It was a trick, Islamic trick. Hello, we made you convert to Islam, say Shahada, and now you cannot leave. <laughs> All right, guys. All right, just give me 20 minutes and we will come back to answer comments of the Mohammedan because the comments of Muhammad is the most hilarious comment. Thank you very much. May the Lord bless you and we we'll see you soon again in a few minutes, maybe 20 minutes. Thank you and God bless you. Take care. We have a Muhammad and his name is Muhammad Zunad, Zunad, I think he is an Indonesian. And by the way, Indonesian people, I noticed that everybody is downloading the videos, but not Indonesian. I'm not sure what happened. I don't see many of you doing that. It says here in the comment, those people want to erase Islam. But for me, this is false religion called Christianity. I'm a human being. I will take it as a yes if you guys continue. What? Uh, uh, what? I don't know. I mean, your English is not helping me at all. I thought my English is horrible, but look like both of us now we are in the same, uh, you know, school. My friend, they want to erase Islam. Islam is erased long time ago. Look what your prophet said. The Prophet said, not me, the Messenger of Allah has saying, Islam began as a small religion and will return to state in which it began. So if you are saying they want to erase Islam and you cannot do that, well, your Prophet, he disagree. Look like you are insulting your prophet again and saying your prophet he did lie and this is will not happen. Actually, if we look at Islamic countries, starting from Indonesia, the biggest Islamic country, we will find there is no Islam in Indonesia. As an example, do you listen to music? Find me one Indonesian, don't listen to music. You will not find one. Starting from you. Do you watch movies? Do you watch Tom Cruise? Do you? So when a person says such a statement, we laugh. Those who they are asking for reference, my friend, it's very easy. You can copy from this, you know, like look at the screen. Hmm? Look at the screen. Islam began as a small religion copy it copy or you can for sure you can type it and go to the website and put it in the search engine i mean why you guys need a reference you, the reference in the front of you should i post for you always i mean i am one person doing all this work so anytime you see something in the screen just copy some unique words put it in the search engine as it is and you will find the reference very easy no matter what video of mine you are watching so as you see, you're a prophet, and this is Sahih, which is make it more horrible. It is Sahih. Oh boy. Sahih. Oh man. Sahih. Oh no. This can't be true. It is Sahih. So this is Sahih. Shall I sing it for you? So what's happening is, 
that you Muslims, you claim to be Muslims, but the fact none of you is a Muslim. And people left Islam from the time of Muhammad, actually. All of us, we knew something is called the War of Upper State. Since the beginning of Islam, people left Islam, and there's a big sheikh, his name is Al-Qaradawi. Uh, he said, if not the War of Upper State and the sword, no Muslim left. Islam is demolished. And this is what you are trying to do now. You're trying to keep Muslims Muslims by forcing uh, terrorism. You know, anyone who leave Islam, you want to kill him. Anyone he make a comment, you want to kill him. A Muslim, he make a comment in Facebook, you want to go after him. Because simply, you are terrified. It's not because you are strong, but because you are weak. And because you know that Islam is gone. And now you are trying to stop it and saying, okay, if we go after those who make comment against Islam, maybe we can stop Islam from collapsing. Islam collapsed long time ago. If we go right now and search for nightclub in Indonesia, how many we will find? And who is the customers? Hmm? Nightclubs. I met a person who work, I asked him, I didn't know him, you know, I met him in Asia. So I said to him, what do you do? He said, I am a manager of nightclub. Oh, okay. And uh, he said, uh, but I don't work here, which means the country we met in. I said, where do you work? I said, in uh, Indonesia. He said, Indonesia, there's night clubs. He said, oh, they are so big. They are so huge. He said, some of them in the size of a stadium. In the size of what? A stadium. Actually, he said, some of them, they are a stadium. So you go after a Christian for preaching the gospel, but your nightclub is open. Alcohol is everywhere. Girlfriend, boyfriend, tourists coming. Oh God, if, if I go right now and search on YouTube, I will find tens of thousands of videos of foreigners, not only Indonesian, coming to Indonesia, boyfriend, girlfriend, where is Islam? The girl she is posting in her bikini. Where is Islam? There is no Islam in Indonesia. So you fool yourself, you lie to yourself. You claim that you are a Muslim, but the fact you live, you live from the bikini business. I'm sure I'm talking about those Muslims. By the way, bikini business is good. I mean, the sad thing, I cannot do it. Because I am not a Muslim and I don't live in Indonesia. So you accuse everybody, you attack everybody, and you claim that you are a decent person. You know what your prophet, he says about those who listen to music, brother? You will not believe it, brother. I will show you. And this is additional proof that your prophet is a fraud. Invite your friends, guys. At the end of the program, we are giving you free ticket, not to Indonesia, to Afghanistan. One way ticket. Anyway, you will not come back, you know it. So here you will see your prophet saying that those who enjoy the following, drinking wine, calling, calling it by other names, that's what the Muslims do these days, they do. They call it by a different name. As simple as that. And then they play musical instrument. Uh -huh. Musical instrument will be played for them. And singing girls will sing for them. Is that the Korean bands? They keep coming to Indonesia, brother. And tens of thousands go crazy to meet them. What? Girls will do play an instrument for them. Allah will cause the earth to swallow them. Oh boy. And Allah will turn them into pigs and monkeys. Here we go. I, you know what? I will shave my 20 foot beard, long beard. If you don't have tons of videos and songs in your phone, you're yourself. And the question is, why Allah until now did not turn you into a pig or a monkey? Even though you are talking like one, to be honest with you, you are jumping all over the place. This is actually 
a clear proof that Muhammad is a false prophet because if this is true well half of the country at least I mean if not not all the country will turn into pigs and monkeys because everybody listen to music I listen to music too I mean like my favorite song like uh, you know jungle bombs jungle bombs jungle all the way because I'm a Muslim you know yeah we bring bombs we bring bombs we bring everywhere hey you know like you know Alhamdulillah you know Muslims if we search right now for, you know, according to Google, searching for for porn, who is number one Islamic country? Pakistan. Number one country in the world, actually. So I don't know, you know, you tell me. You tell me, is your prophet is lying or not? So your prophet, he said Islam will start as a small and will end as a small. And your prophet, he says those who listen to music and watch girls playing music, Allah will make them pigs and monkeys. And look at you, you are so handsome, you don't like a pig, you don't look like a monkey, you know, you look like Zakir Naik, Alhamdulillah. So did your prophet lie? Maybe, I'm not sure. We go to the second comment. <clears throat> By the way, guys, don't forget to watch the video, previous video we just made a few minutes ago. Because usually people, they watch uh, the last video and they forget the one before it. Okay. Look what this uh, uh, Muhammad Zunid he's saying. It is easy. It is easy to deceive the Christians by these videos. Mm -hmm. How how it how is it easy? I mean, my friend, I'm showing you your prophet words. Are you saying if we show the Quran, we deceive people? It's easy to deceive Christians by these videos. CP is very clever. You mean that is something you should not say that. Isn't it the Quran says that those who attack Islam they are fool? What's wrong with you? I mean you are really you are playing with Allah. And I'm afraid he's going to turn you into a pig or a monkey. It's because now you have many reasons to be as you see the hadith and he will say to me you're lying it doesn't say that it's in front of you so cp is very clever can some count me and tell me about the numbers of the video he made hmm i know you better than anyone else so you cannot receive me as ways you deceive these people. Oh, he's saying that he is the smart cookie. You cannot. I don't try. You cannot. You cannot deceive me. You cannot. You cannot. Mm -hmm. My friend, just to show you how ignorant you are, you don't know what you are talking about because you are exposing Allah again. Isn't it Allah? He is the one who said that he appointed shaitan to deceive you even he appointed shaitans to deceive your prophet hmm? who is the one who sent shaitan to deceive people did shaitan come by himself or shaitan was sent by allah The Quran says, Shaitan was sent by Allah. Shaitan, he mislead you, but he is doing the order of Allah. If you go to chapter 6, number 112, it says clearly that Allah, he made to every messenger, to every prophet, enemies, from the devils he appointed he appointed to every messenger shayateen many satans so satan in islam is a person who do a job he is not a bad person if you remember just a few days ago we showed you that islam believe that allah implemented inside you wickedness if we go to the reference, give me a second. All right. 
if somebody have a wickedness, actually every human being he have wickedness according to Islam, and that wickedness is implemented by Allah, implanted by Allah. Read it carefully, it is not my words, because you will say it's, it's lying. And read carefully, this is Sahih. So don't tell me this is uh, not authentic, not etc. And read carefully, this is Quran. It says, He gave it, it is wickedness and it's pity. So according to Quran, it's not me who deceive you if I ever did, but I don't do that. However, the Quran saying that Allah, he implemented deceiving and deception and wickedness inside you. So you will follow the wickedness of Allah. So look what you did. You are taking the wickedness of Allah and you are throw it at me. When in fact the Quran says, it's not a Christian prince who did that, it is Allah who did this. And here you see, when the Muslim, they try to defend their cult, they use their wickedness against us. Because what you said is a lie according to your religion. So do you believe in your religion or you believe in your lies? So how I can deceive you when the Quran says no one can deceive but Allah? Who is the best deceiver? The Quran says Allah. Nobody can deceive like Allah. And as you see here, the Quran claiming clearly, and this is a translation for the Quran and interpretation. It is something already been destined. It's destiny. What is the destiny in Islam? The destiny is your wickedness and your act, bad or good, ugly or evil. It is destiny by Allah. So when you do evil, you are doing the will of Allah. When you rape a woman in Islam, you are doing the will of Allah. As you see, it's implemented, your weakness, implanted. Who is the one who put the wickedness inside you? It's Allah. When the angel, he Allah, he sent him, he write your deed, the good and the bad. He write it for you. This is why when Adam and Musa, they debate according to your prophet, Adam, he says to Musa, are you going to blame me for an act which Allah destined for me 40 years before his, cre his creation to me? And then for sure, you know, Adam, he lost the debate. Then we see this guy saying, continue with his wickedness and lies. Christianity is simple religion, nothing matter. If Jesus love you, everything to you is so simple. You know, well, Jesus said, my friend, not everyone says to me, Lord, Lord will enter the kingdom of my father, but the one who do his will. It is your prophet who said, if you say certain words like a hundred times, Allah forgive all your sin. <laughs> Have you ever heard of so such a religion? Huh? If you say Alhamdulillah, certain number, Allah forgive all your sin. Just to give you an example of how easy Islam is. Islam is a religion of sin. Christianity is very tough. Very tough. Why in Islam? It's so easy. Look at this. The Messenger of Allah. And this is Sahih, by the way. So you can you see how many times? Look. And even Al Bukhari. So you cannot say this is not true. This is Al Bukhari. Let us read Al Bukhari. Allah Messenger said, Whoever says Subhanallah, wa bihamdihi, 100 times a day, will be forgiven all his sin if they wear as much as the foam of the sea. <laughs> How easy is that? <laughs> I like it. 
<laughs> That's it. So we just go and we say Alhamdulillah, Bihamdihi, 100 time, and all our sin is forgiven, even if it is like the sea. And you are talking about easy religion. Okay, guys, from now on, we are going to create a program. It's called Alhamdulillah, Bihamdihi to Muslims. And Muslim, they call us and they say 100 time Alhamdulillah. And then they leave the program and all their sin is gone and clean. So how easy, man. So why you want to punish people for sin? Go have sex, go do a killing, do go and do rape. And then the end of the day, so say subhanAllah 100 times. And you are talking about easy religion. SubhanAllah. That's it. Hmm. Any Muslim have a comment about Subhanallah? So, Muslims, do you think if a Christian prince he says Subhanallah, Bihamdihi, 100 times, all his sin will be gone? Like, did a Christian prince he speak against Muhammad for years. So now he say, Alhamdulillah, bihamdihi, Alhamdulillah, bihamdihi, Alhamdulillah, bihamdihi. You know, after five minutes, all the sin of Christian prince, it says, it says in the front of you, Alhamdulillah, bihamdihi. Your prophet even did not say even a Muslim, he says, anyone who says that, even so, if you are a Buddha, or you are a Hindu, or you are a Christian, or you are a Jew, all what you need to say, Alhamdulillah, bihamdihi, if we ask Zakir Naik about this, for sure Zakir Naik, he will give better explanation. Griffin Prince, first of all, I'm not going to answer you. Zakir Naik, listen carefully. I swear by the, by the shin of Allah, if you don't answer me, I'm going to let Abbas answer me. First of all, if you think you can make competition between me and Brother Abbas, you cannot do that because we are a brother and we are doing the same business. He delivered pizza and I delivered pizza too. Uh, you, you deliver pizza, you change your career? Exactly. Okay, listen, forget about Abbas now. Your prophet said, if you say Alhamdulillah bihamdi 100 times, Allah forgive all your sin, even if it's like a hundred times, um, like a million times, a billion times, like an ocean. So how you explain that? First of all, he worked there the scientific miracle. How the prophet he knew about the form of the sea. This is the question we need to stop with. And then after we finish the scientific study of the form of the sea, then we can answer you. What form of the sea have to do with scientific? You know, everybody can see it. The waves come and you see form of the sea. What is it? Even this one is discovery. Exactly. Because the prophet was far, living far away from the sea. He is not far away, he's like a hundred miles away. What are you talking about? First of all, hundred miles at that time, it was very far different. Imagine in the time of the donkeys and the horses and the mule, you go hundred miles time. It's going to take you long, maybe two days. Well, uh, but still, you, you know, you will see the sea is not far away from you, right? Exactly. But the prophet, he mentioned something very incredible. It's incredible. Okay, you know what, Zach and Nike, I'm going to hang up on you and I will ask Abbas to call me. Because obviously you are not trying, you don't want to answer. Good temper. Don't hang up. If you hang up, you are hanging away from me. Okay, so what is the answer? Why if I say 100 times, Alhamdulillah, my sin is forgiven. I know, I, I want to know what I accomplish. I just say words. What is the accomplish of the work I did? By saying Alhamdulillah 100 times, my sin is forgiven. Good temper. First of all, by saying Alhamdulillah 100 times, you became like a parrot. Like what? The parrot. How you mean those birds who speak like, take me here, take me here. Exactly. And by the 100 then you dying, that means you became a Muslim parrot. Okay. And what is the accomplishment from that? First of all, in Islam, you are a good Muslim if you are a parrot, which means you repeat what you do not understand. And it is exactly what is required from you to be forgiven. Oh, okay. You know what, I'm looking at the chat and I see Abbas in the chat. He said nothing about Alhamdulillah one at a time until now. 
Do you think Abbas, like you, is a parrot too? Exactly. All of us are parrot, and we are in different color. As an example, Abbas is a different kind of parrot because he lives in England. What a parrot called? Hmm. So when Abdul he come and he post a comment saying a Christianity is so easy and he lies saying that in Christianity if Jesus loves you you can do whatever you want that's a big fat lie. The Bible is so clear not everyone says to me God God and the, by the way the Muslim they say to you where Jesus says I am God worship me. Not everyone says to me God God will enter the kingdom of my father but the one who do his will. What his will? We can go and read different places like Jesus speak about wishing a woman is not yours. Adultery, lying, all those things will take you to hell. Actually, Muhammad, he copied from Paul many verses about what is will make you go to hell, like gambling as an example. But why you want to worry about gambling anymore? You go to gamble, and then after you, before you leave the casino, when you are in the elevator, you are going out, say Alhamdulillah 100 times, that's it. All the gambling you did and the prostitute, you step with them. And by the way, Islam is not against prostitution anyway. I can show you that from the Quran. If we go in the Quran as an example, you will see. It says, There is no punishment in Islam for prostitution. This is number one. And this, chapter 24, verse number 33, it says, Force not your daughters to do prostitution. Not, sorry, not daughters, your, your slaves. And if you force them, Allah is all merciful. That's it. Where is the punishment for prostitution? Did Allah mention any punishment of those who they are using their slaves? They kidnap Christian women, they kidnap Jewish women, they kidnap Hindu women, and then they force them into slavery of sex. If there's a punishment for doing that? No. Zero. So prostitution is legally official in Islam. We continue with the comments. Then he said, He's answering a guy, his name is Ivan. Ivan, he said to him, you are a donkey. Don't say that, Ivan. Don't insult donkeys, please. Uh, he said, you call me donkey. Do, you, do I look like a donkey? That's a good question. That's a good question. Well, you're a prophet, he said, if you raise your head before the imam, he finished the prayer, Allah will turn your head into a head of a donkey. And as long as you agreed that your head is not a head of a donkey, that means your prophet did lie because there is no way all your life of praying and you did not leave or left your head before the Imam he finished the prayer. So you yourself now, you help us to prove that Muhammad is a fraud. Do I look like a donkey? By the way, we don't see your picture. But let me tell you something. No, you look like a donkey. Because if you believe in this hadith in the front of you, obviously you are a one. Who in the world want to believe that if a person, he is a believing in God, it doesn't matter what the name of this God. I mean, you came him shish, kebab, hummus, potatoes, whatever you want. But then it is God. You have condition, brother. If you lift your head, you are, you are, this guy he is praying for me. Okay, let us say I'm God. Huh? And my name is Muhammad. And this person is praying for me. And you know, he raises his head before the Imam finished because he doesn't know if the Imam is finished or not. How we know? Maybe his head is not, is, is, is not up yet. He stopped talking. But maybe his head is still down. How I know? I have to lift my head to see. So this God, if I lift my head up, he will make my head the head of a donkey. Based on this, my friend, I have to say, to believe in such a belief, you must be a big donkey. In other way, maybe you are a mule. Otherwise, you have to explain to me 
How in the world do you believe in such a garbage? Then you continue saying, <clears throat> I will not call you donkey in return. Everyone who read my comment, eh? why you will not call him donkey? What's wrong with you? Didn't your Quran call them donkeys? <laughs> uh? <clears throat> Didn't your Quran call him donkey? And so if calling somebody donkey is an insult, why you are not against the Quran then let us see the Quran mention what kind of donkeys actually the Quran is like a zoo man you know if we go in the Quran you will find that even the Quran mentioned the zebra and say we are the same as zebra yeah we are very tall is that your Quran And look what happened here. The one who is frightened is you. One cartoon will make you frightened. You go like a wild donkey. You start kicking everybody. One post in Facebook, you go frightened like a donkey and you start kicking everybody. Anything people say, anything people do, you go like a donkey. You forget that you are a human. A person, he saw a cartoon of Muhammad, you want to slaughter him and you did. So suddenly you are a person who will not call someone a donkey when you Quran he do so. Hmm? In different verses says Kal an'am they are the same as animals. So a person is speaking about this. Look at this comment, how stupid it is. Let them notice you are using slang words is a sign of hypocrisy did you say the one who used the word donkey to call somebody he is a person infected with the sign of hypocrisy did you just say that this is a slang words as a sign of hypocrisy so you are insulting your prophet saying your prophet is hypocrite is a coward. He called people donkeys. I'm really disappointed of you. You know, I was expecting Christian Prince to insult Muhammad, but you, my brother, my brother, you insult Muhammad, peace upon him. You do that. Shame on you. In chapter 7, verse 179, the Quran not only call us donkeys, he call us an'am, baha'im, cattle, animals, all kind of bad creatures. But they are animals. But your comment is very straightforward. Thank you very much. The one who do that, he is infected with the sign of hypocrisy. So you're a prophet, Aka Allah, according to your words, not my words. I don't want to get killed for this. And I don't, I, I never insult Muhammad. You know, I always respect him. I always I say, Muhammad, uh, bees upon him, you know, because a lot of bees is like honey. The second Muhammad he show up, the bees like, whizz, you know, honey. But look what you did. You just made it clear that the one who used such a statement, he is using a slang word. Let them notice. 
Let them notice, my friend. Let them notice you. Using slang words is a sign of hypocrisy. Plus being cruel. Are you insulting Muhammad? Yes, you are. The Quran even called the parents of Muhammad Najis. What? Najis, what Najis mean? Filthy, dirty, disgusting. Nothing can clean you. وَإِنَّمَا الْمُشْرِكُونَ نَجِسِ Have you ever heard of a prophet he describe his parents in such a way? Chapter 9, verse number 28. So to be honest with you, I like it when you say I go straight to the point and you did. You just confirmed that your prophet is a filthy man. Thank you very much. Another comment. Let us see. Shall we stop here, guys? I mean, this guy is poor. I mean, I feel sorry for him. This guy, you now he, he insulted Muhammad. He insulted the Quran. Uh, look, look, look what he's saying. Prophet will never call a donkey to a human. Did you just say that? Did you just say that? This man, he just condemned his prophet. Saying with the clear words, Muhammad is a very evil bad man. Muhammad will never call anyone donkey. Why? Because Muhammad, he have a very high level. There's no way he will see with such a language. Not Muhammad, my friend. If you think Muhammad ever will use such a language, no way. So you just agreed that if you're a prophet, he says such a language, he is a filthy creature. I mean, how much help I need from a Muslim more than this? You are condemning your own self, insulting yourself, lying wide open. Ivan, calling donkey is not allowed. <laughs> and the funny is saying he is against hypocrisy and liar. So. You cannot call him donkey, but your prophet can call him donkey, and he did. You cannot call them donkey, and it's a sign of hypocrisy, and your Quran says that too. You cannot call him names, and your Quran calling us all kinds of names. We are filthy, we are nudges, we are animals, we are cattle, we are zebra, we are, I mean, all of this. But you, the decent Muslim, who refused to follow Muhammad and his faith, thank you very much. Actually, I'm thinking to make you an admin because you prove to me you are better, way better than the faith in Muhammad. Shall we go more? You believe in Christianity because you have something to believe. Supernatural. Hmm. And it's not bad decision to look at another religion the power of a spirituality not bad decision just for a trail a test just compare it to Christianity to test the strength I like that is that the supernatural belief is your prophet believe that the donkey Yeah. he was made of 60 donkeys and Allah he sent him to Muhammad and Muhammad he asked him do you like females is it super belief that your prophet tried to commit suicide did your prophet was he trying to do like to, to to join different religion like it's called suicide religion he was trying it maybe what kind of a prophet he tried to commit suicide? And what was the reason he don't believe he's a prophet? 
so you are asking a person to look at other religion why we want to look at religion any religion look at your prophet look how cute he is every day he go to the top of the mountain and he throw want to throw himself and then the angel come to him and he say you are indeed indeed the messenger of Allah don't do it don't do it and then whereupon this his uh, heart be, uh, would become a quiet and would calm down and would return home your prophet himself he don't believe you know if you go right now and search for those who try to commit suicide suicide is a sign of depression clear I mean a high depression not only depression to the point you lost hope of everything to the point you don't believe in God there's no way you believe in God and you do suicide actually your prophet himself he said that the one who tried to commit suicide to kill himself like by as an example by a hadida like a knife or something he will go to hell so your prophet he knew that the one who commits suicide will go to hell let me try to find you the hadith Uh. <laughs> anyway, let me see if I can find it. Give me a second. A prophet will do teach that if you commit suicide by the way commit suicide not cause suicide bomber suicide like killing yourself not killing the Christian and the Jews that's a different story in this time if you you know kill yourself for the sake of killing the enemies that's very welcome <clears throat> Let us see the hadith. You know, I don't like to uh, mention something. Uh, let us see if we can find this one in English. Here we go. The one who commits suicide, he will go to hell. Do you see it? So your prophet was trying to commit suicide to go to hell? Was he trying to test hell? You want to see how hell looked like? If you're a prophet, he knew that the one who tried to commit suicide, he go to hell. Why are your prophet doing it? There's one answer. He's mentally ill. He's a stupid. He is not a true believer. He don't believe in himself himself. Actually, the Quran confirmed that Muhammad don't believe in himself. You will find in the Quran it says, In kunta fi shakin min America, if you have a doubt, if you don't believe. Go and ask the Christians. Now let us see how many people will download these videos because I noticed not many are doing, you know, they are not helping. People don't care maybe no more. I'm not sure. Say, O Muhammad, O you mankind, O you mankind, it says that. Okay. Oh, this is a different verse. Just, and I'm quoting the wrong verse. Sorry. This, uh, the search engine is stupid. Yeah. Chapter 1094. <laughs> so if you Muhammad are in doubt concerning that which we revealed into you the Quran you know whatever go go and they could hear the guys between the between two brackets that says ie that your name is written in the Torah and that in the gospel 
Really? His name is written there. So Muhammad is having a doubt. Let us say, let us go for the sake of argument. Are you saying to me that Muhammad he did not believe Allah, that his name is written in the Torah and the Gospel? <laughs> and Allah saying to him, if you don't believe me, I'm telling you the truth, go and ask the Christian and the Jews. I mean, that seems hilarious. Muhammad himself do not believe in the lies of Allah. Allah himself saying to Muhammad, if you don't believe my lies, go and ask Christian Prince. Muhammad, he come to Christian Prince, Christian Prince is spank. Muhammad said to him, yes, it's written in your name and in the Bible, my friend, is speaking about false prophet. So yes, your name is in the Bible. Murad, he said the story of the uh, suicidal Muhammad was inv invented by the Persian. You see, this is even more stupid excuse from the execute from the story itself, because if the Persian they invented that, why the Arab approve it? The Persian, the Persian. Okay, well, this is Muslim Sunni. The one who is printing this, translating this, fighting for this is the Arab the enemy of the Persian. So how the Persian, the enemy of the Arab, and the Arab agree upon Muhammad committing suicide. So it's a very lame answer, very silly, very shallow, you know, the Persian invented anything. It's it is Sahih, this is Al-Bukhari. And you know, the funny, if you are a Shia, that will make you a Persian then, because the majority of the, 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 the Shia are Persian. I mean, they are, they are desperate trying to defend the stupidity, you know? Anything else? So I don't know if I want to continue with those comments, but this guy is really uh, very helpful, and he exposed his religion very much, and I like it. I like it very much. Any Muslim have anything you want to say? Anyone? Any Muslim would like to call me? So I can open my Skype just for you. Anyone? So as you see, the Muslims and their answers are funny and dummy. And actually the way, the way they, they try to answer it help us. What do you think of any Christian said there is destiny in Christianity? Well, you know, in Christianity, there's, there's a certain kind of destiny, yes, but destiny not about sin and act. Destiny is like you are born to die. That's something you cannot change. You know what I mean? We can say that is a destiny. God, he decide your destiny that when you are born, you are born to die. That's why Jesus said, uh, let the dead bury the dead. The rest does not exist. They will say to you that God, he says, I choose you before you choose me. For God, he knew the future. He knew what you would do. But the Bible is so clear. Not everyone who do the say to me God God will enter the kingdom of my father but the one who do his will so destiny when it's come to act is your free will destiny when it's come to your dying that's not a free will you will die can you stop that no so yes there is a destiny but the destiny in Christianity is limited to the day or let us say you you are not a person who will live forever that is something have nothing to do with your choice. You cannot change it. However, the Lord, he says, whoever believe in me and I will live. You can say that he gave you a new destiny, but it's not really a destiny. It's a choice you make. You chose. In this case, you made your destiny. Whoever believe in me and I will live. So you want to live? God, he gave you a chance. So you can say, okay, God, he destined two things. People who will go to hell 
have to do, you know, they, they disobey me. And people who believe in me and follow me, they are going to live and go to heaven. Okay, so we can say that is a kind of a destiny. But who decide where to go, it's you. You know what I'm saying? It is you who decide where you are going to end. In Islam is the opposite. It is Allah He destined for you where you will go before you come, you know you do sin or not, who care? And we showed you that. Allah He implemented wickedness inside you. Right? This is why when you see uh, Adam and uh, uh, and the Musas, they are debating uh, Musa, he says, Adam, he says to Musa, you know, are you going to blame me for a sin which Allah, he designated for me 40 years before my creation? So even the sin of Adam, according to, to Islam, Adam did not commit sin. Adam is a good person. According to Islam, Allah is evil. Allah he have a plan and the plan is I'm going to create a person his name is Adam I'm going to make him commit sin I will kick him out from heaven I will make a human being a sinner so he can cry and ask for forgiveness this is how stupid Islam is do you see it Forty years before my creation, Allah made the destiny for me to commit sin. Are you blaming me for that? Do you blame me? Read carefully. Adam, he says to Moses, do you blame me for an action which Allah had written in my faith 40 years before my creation? So in Islam, you cannot. Speak about the free will. Even Adam himself, his sin was not his sin. The filthy Allah made him commit sin. So you cannot complain that Adam, he commits sin, for simply he is a victim of the filth of Allah. And here you need to ask yourself, how in the world anyone want to believe in such a garbage? So if Adam, he commits sin because Allah forced him to commit sin, so why he sent him out of heaven? And why I'm going to be punished for sin which Allah implemented in me? Hmm? What kind of religion? What kind of justice? This justice is that you are forced to commit sin, and then this God He will for, He will punish you for He what He forced you to do. Is that justice? He implemented weak wickedness inside you. He programmed wickedness inside you. He forced you to commit sin and he programmed you 40 years before he created you. As you see here. And then he is going to punish you. Like now, I will be punished for being a Christian. But he is the one who made me Christian. <laughs> he will punish you for being a Hindu, but he is the one who made, him, uh, made you Hindu. This is why I say Islam is a stupid, made by a stupid to the stupid one. Kabich? Uh, Muhammad Saeed. Guys, look what Muhammad Saeed he said. Adam was not re removed because of his sin. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. Just to show you why I enjoy Muslim comment. Muhammad, you want to bet that you, what Adam was removed because he commits sin? You want to bet? <laughs> I mean, you Muslims are hilarious. You see, it's unlucky. It's 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 your like your bad luck. You are talking to someone like me. Those answers can work for someone else. You idiot. You are talking to Christian Prince. Chapter 2, verse number 36. It was a penalty. So the shaitan, 
he mislead them so we said to them get down do you see it so get down was a penalty get down and you will be an enmity between you and them and the shaitan Do you see the stupidity? This is your Quran, chapter 2, verse number 36. Shaitan, he mislead Adam and Eve. And the same story, chapter 2, verse number 38. And the same in chapter 7, verse number 24. Adam, he asked Allah, he says, Allah, forgive us, forgive us, forgive us for what? You are the one who made him commit sin. You are the one, the hadith is so clear. 40 years before you created me, you made me commit sin. So Adam asking Allah for forgiveness for what? How stupid that is. And then Allah, after Adam, he said to him, forgive me Allah, he says, get down. Get down, one of you, an enemy to other. Adam and Hawa and Eve, Shaitan, even, even the translator is explained to you. So Muhammad Saeed, your last name is Saeed, which means happy. It's an unhappy day for you. Uh, well, I am having the reference here. Guys, this, this, isn't this what the reference is saying? Adam, he's asking Allah for forgiveness. Did Allah forgive him? In this Quran here, they did not. In different chapter, by the way, he did. Stupid Quran. So he asked it to him, please, Allah, forgive me. Why? Okay, forgive me, why? Because he did not, he disobeyed Allah, he ate from the tree. So he mislead them with deception. Then they tested from the tree. Muhammad is trying to copy from the Old Testament. And then Adam, he asked Allah for forgiveness. And here, by the way, you will notice that Muhammad is a fraud. Anyone notice why? Adam here is saying, Forgive us, we did uh, uh, our Lord have we wrong, uh, uh, wronged ourselves. Huh? So Adam here he confessed his sin, he, he wronged himself. How come Adam later he noticed that he was a fool when he said that? Because here he says, No, he did not do wrong, it was Allah who made him do wrong. <laughs> Guys, do you notice? Do you know this? In the Quran, Adam, he said, forgive us Allah for doing wrong to ourselves. So the Quran saying, Adam, he, he admit that he commit sin. Here, Adam saying to Musa, you stupid, you cannot blame me. So look what we have in this religion. We have a stupid Muhammad. He is the one who brought the Quran and he is the one who brought this story. But those two stories don't match. One story, Adam, he says, Oh, forgive me, Allah, for committing sin against you, for I ate from the tree. But in the hadith of Muhammad, when Moses, he blamed him for the sin from eating from the tree, Moses, uh, Adam, he said to him, Are you stupid or what? Do you blame me for an action which Allah had you know, written in my fate? My friend, my friend, the video of David Wood about Iran. Go watch it, what I would do. I mean, what do I need to watch his videos? Do I need to learn from him about Islam? Come on, go watch it. I mean, what do I have to do with those things? There's people, they make videos about things Islamic country, they do. Okay, here we explain Islam, we teach Islam. You go watch it, I get it. I, you don't need to flood the, the chat. Well, what I have to do? I mean, we know what Iran do. Iran kill people every day. But this is all Islamic countries. Is that new? All Islamic country, if you make one statement against Islam, you are dead. Against the government, you are dead. What's new? Like you discover something? Anyway, so as you see here, it's one of the one of the clear signs of the stupidity of Muhammad that he is the same person who report the same story but in one story he says Adam he did not commit sin it was a fate written for him and in another story it says 
it was him confessing his sin to Allah. So we can say here, Adam maybe at that time he was in Iran. The Iranian government, they took Adam to the jail. They start spanking him until he say, forgive me Allah, it's me who did sin. But then Adam, he immigrated to America. And then he met with the Jewish Musas. The Jewish Musas in America, because now he have a freedom of speech. The Jewish Musas, he said to him, Khabibi Adam, Khabibi Adam, Khabibi. Huh? Look at this. Adam and Musas argue with each other. Musas said to Adam, Oh, Khabibi Adam, you are our father, Khabibi, who disappointed us, Khabibi, and turns us, Khabibi, out of paradise, Khabibi. Then Adam said to him, Oh, Khabibi Musas, Allah over you, over his uh, people, Khabibi, and he talked to you directly, Khabibi, and he wrote the Torah for you by his own hands, Khabibi. And now, Khabibi, do you blame me, Khabibi, for an action which Allah written for me in my faith 40 years, Khabibi, before my creation, you eat it, Khabibi? Therefore, we can call this Hadith Khabibi, Hadith. But the question is, how in the world the same story is mentioned by the same guy? I mean, did Muhammad forget what he said in the Quran? Yes, he's a stupid idiot. He's not even the one who wrote the Quran. This is why the Quran does not match with Muhammad words, Khabibi. With this Khabibi, I have to say to you, thank you very much for being here, Khabibi. You know, and uh, uh, the funny one, the Muslim, they bring a Jew like uh, this guy, what's his name? Uh, singer to prove to prove Christianity is wrong. They call him <laughs> Habibi. Oh boy. Anyway, in China they say he left as a donkey. He never came back as a horse. I'm not sure at that time they were knowing about Muhammad. Do you think this is a scientific miracle? Because this is a very ancient statement before the birth of Muhammad. How the Chinese knew that this is fit perfectly about Muhammad? He left as a donkey. He never came back as a horse. Peace upon him. Allah pray for him, not to him. Thank you very much for being here. May the Lord bless you. Don't forget to watch the previous video, which is very important, please. Uh, I encourage you all to download it, share it, add subtitle. All my videos, as you know, I don't keep them in my channel, so feel free to use them in a good way. Thank you. And God bless you, and until we see you soon again, Christ is our Lord, Islam is false, and we prove it every day. Take care.